Hi everyone! So before heading out for the night for a couple other meetings in Shinjuku, uh, I wanted to make another video so I made one this morning before heading out. I'm gonna make one now. So I decided instead of trying to wait till the end of the day to make videos, I'll just make them as I can. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Hopefully more than like 10 minutes, but I want to reflect a little bit on the day that I had so far. So I went to um, my uh, interpreter and I took a very long train ride. It was a little over 70 minutes in total uh, to uh, Sakura, uh, Sakura City. And so the uh, National Museum of Japanese History is in Sakura City. So I was able to speak to one of the researchers and a curator, see some of their collections, get a special tour of a few of the exhibits because the National Museum has a lot of really important exhibits on uh, indigenous peoples in Japan, particularly the, particularly the Ainu and Okinawans, um, uh, and a couple other really important exhibits specifically on discrimination, uh, particularly with the caste system in Japan. So the Buraku caste uh, is it used to be very discriminated against and still is in a lot of ways, um, even though things have, have changed, um, you know, you know how those things work. Uh, so it was really awesome. I really had such a good time talking to the curators and learning more about how museums work and how researchers work for museums, which are essentially this, uh, this wasn't a museum in the way that we would understand it. It was actually a research institute. So I was talking a little earlier about how academia and universities are organized under the the Ministry of Culture. And I got it wrong in the last video. I said it, I called it MEXT, M-E-X-T. And that's actually like the highest ministry. And then there's like one below that, like there's a branch and it like branches to ones below that. Uh, again, complicated. I'm doing my best. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I guess the museum does something similar where researchers, people who have PhDs in a field, are uh, curators, basically. They're the ones who curate the exhibits and research the exhibits and go do field work, so basically anthropologists. Um, and they don't necessarily have uh, library degrees or museum study degrees. They can get additional training, but yeah. so. One of the people I met with was a, an administrator, so they help um, organize a lot of the administrative duties, uh, such as like funding and, and um, stuff like that, uh, Some to some extent working with exhibits. So anyway, those people like I was talking before, administrators as opposed to researchers, who are treated like faculty who don't have a rotating job. The administrators do have a rotating job. Um, and so I asked them, well, how does that work? Because people with rotating jobs are usually uh, the preservationists, people who pull material. Um, that do, does require some specialized skill a little bit. It would be very difficult to retrain. So I asked about it. And they did say that because some of it is a little specialized, they do actually look for um, people with a bit of a background in that to make it easier, but their their positions still rotate. Uh, so that was really interesting. Yeah, the exhibits were so cool. So cool. Very informative. And oh, my meetings are just getting better and better because my, um, like in Japan, uh, really anywhere. If you don't know someone, it's really hard to talk to someone about something that's political or something that might be um, like difficult to discuss if you don't really know what their opinions are on certain things. You tend to be a little more careful. Um, but I noticed that it's been getting so much better since the very first day. One, because I'm understanding how to communicate better and I'm understanding better words to use and better ways to describe things that are more culturally uh, relevant that make more sense in context, but also 
um, my interpreters, I'm, because I've spent so much time with them, I'm getting really familiar with them, and I, I love them. I love them so, so much. They are so much fun to spend time with. And you can tell that we're we're developing this really great bond because um, before when they would interpret certain things, it was just it was really straightforward, like like a job, basically. Not that they weren't very kind and polite and helpful, but I can tell it's it's a lot different now. So it's getting to the point where we're just spending time together and having these really lovely conversations. Oh, I'm sorry like the light keeps changing on this. I'm trying to use my hair to block this like this light up here and then I have to like be in the camera. It's a whole it's a whole thing. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I asked uh one of my interpreters opinions of something today, something in Japanese politics and she was just kind of like yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's just more forthcoming and opinionated, but in like this really just organic way where I can tell that we're connecting and it's such a good feeling. They're so wonderful. We've been talking about like our hobbies. Um, one of my interpreters, she uh, has, she's in a choir. So I'm thinking about going to see her in her choir tomorrow. It's just, it's really lovely. So all of those hardships I was talking about earlier, all of that stress on those first couple days is really just starting to like melt away. Now that I'm getting really familiar with the people around me, I I really care about them and I can kind of feel that they're starting to care about me in a very different way that's beyond just a job. At least I hope so. If not, then they're, they're really good at pretending, which you know what, I'll take. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, so it was great. So the meeting was great. I saw some really awesome stuff. I've been posting uh, things in the Tumblr on like history of the history of Japan. Again, really important to know history of social movements, but also history of indigenous peoples and gender in Japan, which is clearly, you know, different. It's a different place. Duh. Um, yeah, yeah. So today was really great. Train ride was long. Also, something else about the trains. Oh, I have... Oh, good, I have it right here. So to ride the trains in Japan, I highly recommend, and I wrote this in the blog earlier, that before you leave, you can actually order a train pass. So it's a Suica card. You can get a couple different ones. It doesn't matter which one you get. They're all exactly the same. There's Suica, IC, Aikoko, or however you say that, and there's Pasmo. I got Suica because it has the little penguin on it. Look how cute that penguin is. Yeah. So I wanted this one for the penguin. <laughs> um, so you can put money on this um, at the train station. It only The machines only take cash, so you do have to pull out a lot of cash. And I noticed my card kept getting like low and low, and then one time I tried to go through the turnstile where you swipe the card. Um, and it was too low for me to go through, and then the little gate swung shut, and it like, like is red, it turns red, and like makes an angry sound, and then everyone is like, ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, it's embarrassing, it's stressful, and also, if you have a credit card or debit card with a chip on it, the machine will read that. So if you accidentally swipe it and that card is also in like your wallet or something, it will beep red because it will be reading the wrong card. So uh, it took me a little while to figure that out. I kept thinking I was out of money. So make sure your credit card with a chip is not anywhere near um, your, your Suica, your Suica card. Yeah, otherwise you'll get embarrassed at a lot, at a lot of trains. Uh, Mm, oh yeah, I was going to say, depending on where you go, I uh, Sakura City is quite far away from uh, like central Tokyo, which is where I'm at, uh, and I put $50, the equivalent of $50, which is 5,000 yen, 
on the Suica card and I was like, oh, that was way, that was way too much. How am I going to use this? Um, one, you can actually use a Suica card at more than, for more than just trains. Pretty much any time you're in a train station, um, at vending machines that you see, if ever you see, like, this little logo, that means you can use your Suica card basically as a debit card. So I just went to a cafe a second ago and the cafe did not take any sort of regular credit card, but it did take a Suica card, so. Um, and you can get an app. Let me show you the app. Suica Kaibo. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. So it's the little, the little purple one right there. It's like impossible to see. I'm the worst at this. You can get this app and you can actually like put the card on your phone and it will read the card and it will tell you like how much money you've spent, how much you have left. It will even break it down into graphs like how much has been spent on trains or buses or taxis. Oh yeah, you can use this card for buses and taxis, pretty much anything. And also like how much you spent on money so and where you've been. So it's really easy to track, super convenient, so so convenient. But again, I thought like $50 is way too much. What am I going to do with it? I'm just going to have to like spend it all on food and stuff. Or you can also use it at the airport to get souvenirs when you leave if you have money left. Uh, turns out 50 bucks was not even close to being enough. I put $50 on two days ago, the day before yesterday, and uh, I'm already almost out of cash on it. So I'm going to have to put more or on it which isn't to say trains are expensive they're actually very cheap it's like like a buck 50 to go a couple stations it's really not that bad but if you're traveling really far if you're traveling a lot which um clearly if you're on the horner fellowship you're going to be doing because you're visiting a lot of multiple places throughout the day you're gonna have to put a lot of money on it so even if you like throw a hundred bucks on there when you get in here it's probably gonna be used within a couple days so uh, that's just my little, like, diatribe on Suica, which I didn't mean to do. That should have just been a separate video, um, because I really just wanted to talk about my day today and the lovely train ride through the mild countryside and how much I love my interpreters and that they're so lovely and wonderful and that, like, a lot of the people I've been meeting with are a lot more forthcoming and, and honest about how they feel which is really refreshing. It's so cool. It's really cool to be in a position where people feel like they can trust you um, with some of their thoughts and feelings. It gives me a much better, deeper and more personal insight into not only Japanese culture, but the system. And, and also makes you realize just even even though things are different like how similar people are how similarly we feel and how similarly we um like express our emotions and feelings even beyond those cultural differences that sounds corny but it really is true um like i i thought that i would be coming across more differences when i got to japan just because like our our, our cultures like run parallel but very separate right two very distinct styles of like ways of doing things culturally it turns out like i'm finding just as many if not way more similarities than differences and that's that's wonderful i i think it's really great uh yeah Mm, what else is there to discuss? Had a good day. The museum was awesome. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Whether you're in Japan for the Horner Fellowship or just visiting, go to this museum. First of all, Sakura City is gorgeous. Um, and the museum is just so cool. So, so cool. You learn clearly a lot about Japanese history, right? Because it's the uh, National Museum for Japanese History. So yeah, it was really awesome met some cool people. Um, and I met another, another Horner fellow today. So a Horner fellow that visited, um, the United States from Japan. She, I guess, works part-time at the museum and she was really excited to hear that I was visiting. And so she, like, surprised me and she visited me with her kid who's so cute. Oh my gosh, her daughter, 
oh, I love her daughter. So I was talking to her daughter and her daughter had like a, um, uh, my melody, which is a Sanrio character. If you're familiar with my melody, it's like a bunny that wears like a little pink hood. So cute. And she also had the yokai watch, um, little figurine, which is a, a video game for Nintendo, a little similar to Pokemon, but not really. It's an easy comparison, but it's not true. Um, anyway, so I was like, oh, these things are so cool. And her daughter was like, oh, <laughs> it was so sweet. And her daughter gave me a little gift. She was carrying around like a tiny, a tiny little thing of Mentos because Mentos were really popular here. And she was so excited because I happen to have, I always carry extra omiyagi because like seriously, you meet so many people. So I brought like a ton of omiyagi, like big bags of Reese's peanut butter cups that are so easy just to give as omiyagi because there aren't any Reese's peanut butter cups here. I'm going to do a whole other video on like omiyagi because yeah, I'm glad that I was over prepared for this. I'm already running out and it's only, it's not even a full week yet. But anyway, so I happened to have like a cute little bag and I gave it to her that had like a Reese's and some library stickers in it. And so she gave me a present too. It was so sweet. It was so cute. Oh, I might have it. I might, I might have it. Now I'm gonna like waste time fumbling with my bag while I'm talking to you. Oh, here it is. Oh, look at it. She gave me a little... Oh, you can't, it won't like focus on it, but it's a mini strawberry Mentos. Oh, I'll remember her forever. Oh, so sweet. Um, also, I might do another video on the subway system, just like how to navigate it and stuff like that. It does get easier. It just takes practice. Um, some stations like will probably never be easy. They're freaking mazes. They are so stressful. But you can get like these awesome little pocket maps from uh, any sort of station. Just look for the little kiosks that have magazines on it. And then you get this. It looks incredibly complicated. Super easy to understand, right? No, no, it's not. Is that even the right way? Yeah, that's the right way. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. But I swear, like, after just being here for five, five days or so, you get used to it real fast, mostly because you don't have a choice. So, yeah, like I said, everything's color-coded, makes it a little bit easier. Certain stations that um, are bigger, like uh, Shinjuku, <sighs> yeah, yeah, those are a nightmare. Those will always be a nightmare, but it's okay, just follow the colors, Google map it. Google map, it will tell you everything. Worst case, you get on the wrong train and then have to turn around. It's just like, um, just like anything else. You mix, miss an exit on the freeway or something. Like, don't panic. You aren't stuck there forever. Just like, turn around. Turn around when you can. That's fine. Um, and it'll just be like an extra dollar or something like that. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, so make sure to pick up one of these subway things. I did print out a map. You can get the maps online and download them. I did that and I put it in my the binder that I prepared for traveling uh, ahead of time. I'm actually going to upload everything that I put in my binder on this blog, on the Tumblr blog, uh, just so that people can easily download it if you decide to make a trip because it has like language stuff. It has a whole, like every map of every region. It has like emergency preparedness, phone numbers, um, where the locations of shelters are in case of like a typhoon or an earthquake, all, all sorts of stuff. I'll upload it just to make it easy for everyone else. It took me forever to make. Um, yeah, so this is super helpful. Get it. Um, but you might not be able to use it because you have your phone, but this is really good to have just in case. And it's better than the printed out version because it's nice and laminated. Fancy, fancy lamination. Oh, I just ruined the folding on it. All right, I think I'm probably going to get going. I'm going to the zine distro tonight. Gonna go meet up with some activists, see what they're up to. I brought a whole bunch of zines as an omiyage from uh, Arizona, from Wasted Ink Zine Distro, which is in downtown Phoenix, that I'm going to give to them um, in exchange for zines from here and then bring them bring them back yeah 
which is really cool. So that's mostly what I had to say now. Talk about Omiyagi and other things later and some of my other experiences, but I'm gonna go add some cash onto my Suica card. Oh, so much money. Anyway, I hope you all have a great, it is Friday, oh no, it is Saturday morning there now at 221. And it is only Sunday, oh no. Yeah. No. I don't know. It's someday here. Who knows? Time is relative. Whatever. Anyway, I hope you all have a really good weekend. Uh, I miss you all. I'm thinking of you all. And I'm excited to tell you more about my trip. Fingers crossed. Uh, Shinjuku goes a lot better this time than last time. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I don't get as stressed. I will update you later though, so you will know. You will know either way. Okay, if I don't update you, yeah, something might have gone wrong. Okay, I'll talk to you all later. Bye! See you later!